So uh, what else? Reliance on market. So if you rely on market for everything, like we have a market-based system for healthcare provisioning in this country. I had just a little uh, uh, story to tell you. I was in Italy this summer and I had a little problem with something in my skin that looked like chicken pox. It was not, but you know, it looked a little bit scary. So I went through a battery of tests there and I no longer am part of the healthcare system in Italy because I've been living here for 29 years. So I went to a private clinic and paid out of pocket. And the whole barrage of tests they did cost me 36 euros. 36, which is 30, you know, $39. Uh, and they had itemized things like uh, you know, the drawing of blood was two euros and 10 cents, you know, like $2.50, right? This is because there also was a national system that kept those guys honest in terms of pricing. Then I went here, I did my you know, annual checks, and I had to pay $700 for it. It's like the same, the same type of test. There was nothing special about it. You know, it's like one, when you use a market system to deliver basic services, that's the problem you uh, are encountering. Now, the other thing is the markets don't see certain things. Like, no one has to pay for pollution unless there, there is regulation that makes them pay, right? Uh, people don't have to pay for taking down the forest. You know, nature does not charge us. So, the reliance on markets leads to the exploitation of what, what are called externalities, which is costs that somebody else has to pay for. So, when we have, for example, the pollution of all the um, you know, chemical inputs that are flowing down the Mississippi River and destroying you know, the, the Gulf of Mexico, that cost is borne by somebody else. Maybe the fishermen there, maybe the people that uh, you know, would like to invite tourists uh, to the beach and you know, they can't because now the, the place is fouled up. So, um, what else? There is an internal contradiction of labor as cost versus labor income as aggregate demand. Let me explain. If you, have, if you are a business, the less you pay your workers and the better off you are because your costs are lower, labor costs are lower, and you are better positioned to compete with other businesses that might be paying their workers a little bit more or maybe a fair wage. But if everybody does that, then the aggregate income in the economy, which is what the workers receive, also comes down. And that is really what drives economic activity. It's like if everybody is being paid less, there is less money circulating in the economy and you also have to cut down on production and things like that. You know, uh, Ford, the, the guy who was making the cars, understood that and said, I want to pay my workers enough for them to buy my cars. And, but, uh, you know, the aggregate level is the same thing. What is logical and rational from the point of view of an individual firm, which is pay as little as possible for labor, is actually damaging to the economy as a whole, including that business. And in fact, they found out that when minimum wages have gone up, you know, there are, for example, in, in uh, um, Australia now, the minimum wage is about $15. I think in Denmark it's about 22 When they did that, uh, you know, overall the economy has not suffered. The jobs have not uh, disappeared because yes, they might disappear from some really marginal businesses that, you know, could only make it because they are subsidized by substandard wages. But then the additional amount of, of money in the economy allows other businesses to expand and other businesses to be created.